video details for placement of the primary catalytic converter on the right side of a 2008 Porsche Cayenne S. This is a fairly simple job made difficult due to a lack of space. My major concern prior to undertaking the procedure was if something happened to the studs that come off the exhaust manifold, it would present a very difficult situation because there's really no room to work in there to remove them, so it might actually end up involving an engine out procedure, which I wasn't looking forward to or really prepared to do. Uh, fortunately, that didn't happen, and apparently the studs usually are salvageable, uh, so um, that's the good news. In terms of danger, uh, obviously one takes on any procedure like this at their own risk, and this does involve supporting the transmission, uh, as the crossbar that does support it normally has to be removed to get the drive shaft out, as you'll see. But other than that, it, uh, it's a fairly simple procedure. Start by removing the engine design cover on the right side and in the center. I have detailed that in my video on how to do a leak down test on this car, so you can check that video out if you want more detail. Next, place the car in neutral so that the drive shafts will be turnable once the car is lifted into the air. Safely raise the car and remove the under trays. With the car lifted and the belly pans off, you can see uh, what's called the transverse strut running along across the car. Uh, its function essentially is to uh, provide attachment points for the under trays to be screwed to. So we need to remove that. The transverse strut involves uh, removing one nut on each end. Plus a bolt in the middle. In my case, uh, this nut was preventing the bracket from coming out, so I had to remove it. Use a small pry bar to gently uh, get it over the stud. Once it's removed, you can set it to the side, noting the correct orientation for reinstallation. Use a paint pen to mark the uh, front of the drive shaft where it attaches to the front differential. Do the same on the back flange on the that drive shaft. It's preferable to use a different color paint pen so that you know easily which end goes which way. Um, and the reason you're doing this, of course, is because that drive shaft is balanced and it should be reinstalled exactly how it was installed initially. The size 12 triple square socket to remove the bolts on the uh, front drive shaft where it connects to the front differential. And this does require a helper to step on the brake to allow you to uh, turn the bolts without turning the drive shaft. So you need someone to step on the brake and then take the foot off the brake so you can rotate the drive shaft to get it to the next bolt. My drive shaft in the front had never been off and it was really quite stuck in. There's not much depth um, in this area that it engages with the uh, flange on the front differential. I'd say it's an eighth of an inch at the most, but it was really stuck on there. So what ended up working for me was to use a cold chisel to try to bang on it, and make sure to avoid this very thin uh, sheet metal or whatever this is made out of when you're hitting it. And then once I had hit it uh, with the cold chisel several times, turning it around as I went, then I used a pry bar to lever against the subframe, which you can see I did quite a bit of banging on uh, to get this to come out. And, and eventually it did pop out. As shown here, you can see that this is the transmission cross member holding the transmission up in the car. And we're going to need to prepare to remove that. So the first step in doing so is to 
uh, find a way to safely support the transmission. Next, remove the attachment points where the um, main catalytic converters attach to the transmission cross member. Note that both sides uh, main catalytic converter is attached to the transmission cross member. So even though we're just replacing one side's primary catalytic converter, we need to remove the attachment points on the transmission cross member for both sides catalytic converters. With the transmission supported and the uh, main catalytic converters connection points to the transmission cross member are disconnected, then you can uh, disconnect the transmission cross member from the transmission itself by removing the two bolts shown in this image. Transmission disconnected from the transmission cross member. You can proceed to remove the two bolts on each end of the transmission cross member that hold it to the body of the car. Transmission cross member is aside. As with the front side of the drive shaft, now you can remove the bolts with the size 12 triple square socket from the rear side of the drive shaft. The rear side of this front drive shaft uh, just came off on its own without me having to bang on it at all. Uh, I think because it had been disconnected once before. So now with the drive shaft disconnected, you can easily wiggle it out of place and set it aside. I was at it. I used a little bit of scotch brite to clean up the mating surface on both ends, and then blew the dust off, lifting it aside. Next, loosen the nuts on the exhaust pipe connecting clamp that holds the main catalytic converter to the um, exhaust pipe that then goes to the muffler. I think mine had ever been removed. Um, but the nuts were really crusty, and so were the threads on the bolts on top. Um, so I replaced those, as you're going to see in a little bit. The hardware loosened or removed, uh, then you can slide the clamp towards the back of the car, towards the muffler, so that then the primary catalytic converter pipe is disengaged from the muffler section. There are a couple of more bolts holding a bracket from the main catalytic converter to the body that need to be removed next. We can turn our attention to the flange where the primary catalytic converter uh, flex pipe connects to the uh, main catalytic converter. It's held on uh, by three nuts with studs that come from the main catalytic converter side. Uh, it's difficult to get a wrench to fit in here and also uh, one that's small enough to fit but with also enough leverage. So you can see in this image what I did is use a uh, 3 8 inch, I believe it was, ratchet and then use a ring spanner uh, wrench to give myself some more leverage to get the nuts off. Uh, the nuts on my car uh, had never been off before. They were quite corroded and I couldn't get a socket to sit correctly on them at all. So I ended up using a, a nut remover, which I'll show you an image of in a second, uh, to actually get a grip on the nuts. And the, the nuts just ended up snapping off, but uh, the nut remover worked really well. This is what the nut remover looked like, and you can see in my hand that the the nut with stud just snapped off. It didn't take much effort to have it do that. So that's kind of an expectation for this job if it's never been off the car before. The reason I was replacing the primary catalytic converter is because there was an exhaust leak coming from somewhere. I wonder where. With the main catalytic converter disconnected from the primary cat and removed, uh, it's probably a good idea for safety purposes at this time to temporarily reinstall the transmission cross member using the old hardware. The flange for the primary catalytic converter stayed connected to the main catalytic converter flange uh, because the leak was so bad at the flex pipe that it just disintegrated with movement. So the next step is to get these studs out. Um, 
and that uh, requires use of an air hammer. So with a little bit of air hammer, the flange for the primary catalytic converter uh, fell off quite easily. And then the hard part was getting the studs removed from the main catalytic converter. Uh, with the gasket that sits between the two flanges removed, you can see there's quite a bit of stud sticking out and air hammering uh, on the stud in this way, essentially, I mean, it, it, it sort of worked, but it was really mushrooming the studs. So uh, a better method is as follows. So cut the studs off flat and then try to air hammer them out. And if, as in my case, studs still don't want to come out, then you need to use uh, the heat source to heat them up cherry red and then air hammer them up. Left with the main catalytic converter that can then be reinstalled once you've replaced the primary catalytic converter. So here we're looking up from um, the right wheel well uh, behind the right front axle up onto the differential and you can see the primary catalytic converter attached to the exhaust manifold here and I've sprayed some um, penetrant on it to try to uh, let it soak in for removal. Now there's this heat shield that needs to be removed on top of the differential so that's the next step is to remove the screws uh, and remove that heat shield. The heat shield looks like upon removal you can see that there are three screws or bolts that hold it on. I think they're 10 millimeter headed bolts. Also note that there is a uh, little hook here to hold a wire loom, and that just pops off as shown by this image like so. Here you can see that uh, this is the primary catalytic converter looking up from the back side, and you can see the oxygen sensor uh, exiting from the primary catalytic converter, and it has uh, two actual attachment points, these little plastic um, things that hold the wire in place, one here and one further up the line right there. So you need to unclip these plastic things, just get your finger behind this little edge here and pop it open to uh, free the wire for the catalytic converter from both of these little plastic brackets. Go up to the top side of the engine compartment and uh, locate the oxygen sensor. It's the one with the black wire for the primary catalytic converter, at least on my car, which corresponds to the one that I'm holding in my hands here. And simply release the clip for that. And to be able to fish the oxygen sensor connector and wire down through the engine compartment, this uh, little um, hose line holder. Here uh, slides onto a tang on the engine block, so you can simply pull it away and slide it down the hose so that you can get this connector past it uh, for removal. So, here we can see the oxygen sensor and uh, wire for the connector hanging down uh, so that we can remove it with it attached to the primary catalytic converter. Uh, there's also this wire which runs down and it's held uh, in place by this clamp which just clips on to the uh, transmission. That needs to be taken out of its clamp and the clamp can be removed, it just slides right off. Uh, and you need to do that because you need to access these bolts. There are three of them. Uh, two of them go into the bell housing uh, on this bracket and then the one that you can't see here behind the wire is actually bolted to the primary catalytic converter. So you need to remove all three of those bolts to remove that bracket. Here's that clamp uh, removed from the little tang on the bell housing. The bracket looks like that holds the primary catalytic converter in place. So next we need to remove the nuts uh, that hold the primary catalytic converter to the exhaust manifold. There are five of them. Um, in this image, it appears like, well, there's plenty of room, but don't let that deceive you. This is very difficult to get to most of these nuts. There's not a lot of room in here. Here's what you're looking at from underneath the car on the back side uh, by where the 
uh, front drive shaft attaches to the front differential. Again, uh, you can only really see three out of the five nuts from this angle. Well, I started with the easy one, uh, which was the uh, one here, and you can see the extensions that I needed to uh, be able to get uh, a socket and ratchet on it. Each nut was uh, three extensions and a universal joint. You're going to need to use a host of extensions to get to the remainder of the nuts. Say I was able to get this nut loosened with the extensions and uh, uh, leverage that I had doing it that way. Then I was able to uh, remove the rest of the weight with this ratchet uh, in this position. Here you can see the extension setup I had to use uh, to get to, I believe this is the top most uh, nut. And uh, you can see I've got a few extensions going before. Uh, I get to the universal joint, and there'd be a couple probably after that. Uh, and also note that I used a piece of 2x4 so that the extensions wouldn't wobble around to give them some support, stiffen them up a bit. And also you can see here I've got a cheater bar on top of the ratchet to give me enough leverage to actually have enough power through all of this to get the nut to turn. Now this is the last nut that I removed, and it was by far the most difficult. Um, and this is the best picture I could get, and this picture represents the best view I could get, not just limited by being able to get uh, my phone camera in there, but this is all I could see at the best of times when looking at it. So this is on the upper left side uh, next to the engine, and that's really all you have to work with. Uh, it required holding the light up high enough to be able to get light to shine down on it to even be able to see it. So again, I have my uh, block of wood here to protect the um, heat shielding and also give me something to lever against uh, to create some sort of rigidity with all of these extensions required to reach that nut. This is just another angle to look uh, set up to get it that nut. And as shown here, there is just enough room to get an extension um, between the primary cat, sort of above it, and uh, around or above this um, boss on the bell housing to get back in and reach that nut. And so this is the ratchet extension uh, cheater bar setup that I used to reach that almost impossible to see that uh, loosened it was possible then to use a ratchet on uh, a couple of extensions to remove it the rest of the way. Once the nuts out, you can then finally remove the primary catalytic converter. Remove the gasket that sits between the exhaust manifold and the primary catalytic converter. And this is what you're left with, uh, hopefully, and I say hopefully because uh, hopefully the studs attached to the exhaust manifold are salvageable uh, for reuse because if they're damaged or break off, uh, you know, maybe you have a tool that I don't have that can reach uh, into here, but uh, any air hammer with extension would be almost impossible to control it, not have it go flying all over the place to be able to pound these out. So. I wish anyone luck that uh, has to deal with a broken stud, but apparently they don't often break. They're usually reusable, so uh, hopefully that's the case for everyone watching this. Next, what I did was to use a, a proper thread chaser to chase the threads on all of these studs. Threads were corroded enough that I wasn't able to uh, turn the thread chasing nut strictly by hand once I got it started. I did need to use a socket to 
uh, running it all the way in and out on each stud. That left side stud uh, that's mostly hidden, uh, there wasn't enough room to use my screwdriver, the short little screwdriver that uh, I showed you in the last image, to run the thread chaser on. I had to use a socket. There just simply is so little room here. Threads chased and ready for reinstallation. Now you can turn your attention to the primer to catalyze the converter. So here we have the original uh, catalytic converter. See again where the flange just broke off. It was so weak, that's obviously where the exhaust was leaking from. And the replacement catalytic converter, I ordered this from a place called Muffler Express, which is in Ontario, Canada. And it seemed like a pretty good product to me. It's not identical to uh, the original. There's a little bit of a difference in the, the flange, but it's just you know cosmetic thing. Um, slight difference in the length of the flex pipe, um, but um, essentially the same thing uh, by looks, at least to me. Um, so, and I'm quite happy with it. I looks are deceiving when I set them side by side like this. They look fairly similar in this image, but in real life when I was looking at them, it didn't really look like it was the same length. Um, but it turned out that it was a good fit, as I'll show you in a minute. Because the original catalytic converter was good still, uh, it's just a matter of the flex pipe weld uh, having disintegrated over time, I decided to make this little jig setup uh, based on the new one. Um, so that I could put the original one back into it and get a new flex pipe welded in. Um, I did actually go to a speed shop to see if they could get me the appropriate size flex pipe and they couldn't. Uh, so maybe someday I'll come across the right one and uh, be able to get that TIG welded in to have a spare in case this one works out on me. Original primary catalytic converter in the jig and uh, you can see that they do fit exactly the same. So here we have most of the uh, parts that I replaced as part of this job. So the new uh, primary catalytic converter, uh, new gaskets. Uh, this gasket comes with uh, the one for that attaches to the uh, main catalytic converter from the primary catalytic converter. That comes with the primary catalytic converter as well as some bolts um, for that connection where the studs were there. Uh, I actually ordered new ones uh, from Porsche for those anyway. Um, also from Porsche, a new gasket where the exhaust manifold attaches to the primary catalytic converter, uh, new bolts for the transmission cross member uh, attachment to the body, also new bolts for the transmission cross member attaching to the transmission, um, a new bolt for where the primary cab attaches to that bracket there. Uh, and new bolts for both ends of the drive shaft as well as new uh, copper nuts for the primary catalytic converter to main catalytic converter connection. I ordered enough for both sides in case I needed to do the other side too, which I didn't, uh, but I'll have in case I need to do that in the future. And also the exhaust uh, clamp uh, where the main catalytic converter connects to the exhaust pipe going to the muffler. Uh, that one I just used bolts that I had. I didn't have the correct ones, but Porsche doesn't sell those bolts separately, and so you have to buy the whole clamp, and it's fairly expensive. Um, so I just ended up using uh, some nuts and bolts I had, and they worked just fine. But they're not pictured here. You'll see those in a bit. And finally, the uh, oxygen sensor I replaced. As part of the warranty uh, for this new catalytic converter, it requires a new oxygen sensor to be installed. Um, I was thinking about reusing the old one because I, I you can get different warranties with uh, the catalytic converter, and I just went with the least expensive three-month warranty, so I didn't put a lot of stock in that. Uh, but I took the old oxygen sensor out and showed it to someone I know who's in the exhaust business, and he said the threads had some corrosion on them, and if it was him, he wouldn't install it. He would just get a new one. Uh, so. That convinced me to bite the bullet. Uh, they're they're very expensive, almost as expensive as this catalytic converter, um, but it seemed like the right thing to do, so I went with that direction. Before uh, 
putting the new primary catalytic converter in place, I did a little bit of cleanup, so I used Scotch Bright on the flange on the differential. Both things. And then I used some acetone on a clean shop towel to clean them up. I used acetone and a clean shop towel to clean the mating surface at the exhaust manifold. Next, I installed the new um, oxygen sensor into the primary catalytic converter. And note that it comes, at least the one I purchased from Porsche did, uh, with uh, silver anti-seize already in threads. I was going to torque the oxygen sensor to the correct torque, which I believe from memory, but don't quote me on this, but I think it was 33 foot-pounds. Uh, it's been about a month or so since I did this job, so I don't recall what it was off the top of my head. But I discovered that I didn't have the correct size crow foot uh, wrench. I think that was 22 millimeters. So I just used an oxygen sensor uh, wrench to get it uh, to what felt like the right tightness. Place the new uh, gasket uh, on the exhaust manifold. And I put some silver anti seize on the studs. Most of the nuts were fairly easy to get on and started um, just using my finger reaching in uh, or a socket. But the one that's difficult to see on the upper left side uh, sandwiched by the engine, it was difficult to um, get started. And what ended up working for me was to use this uh, pickup tool, which has wires that grip on to the nut. And with that, I was able to kind of get a similar feel to what one has when they're using their fingers to wiggle it just the right way to get it to seat and uh, get it to start to thread on. With the nuts on but not torqued down yet, I put the bracket that connects to the uh, primary catalytic converter in place just to see how it would fit because this is an aftermarket uh, primary catalytic converter so I just wanted to make sure that uh, it would fit as uh, the OEM one does. Actually this is the only slight problem uh, with the aftermarket cat. It didn't line up with this bracket perfectly. Uh, I did tighten this down all the way and it would sort of uh, bend uh, to where I could get the uh, two brackets to meet each other, but there's a lot of tension being placed on it unnecessarily. So here you can see that in fact they will meet together. Um, but you can almost kind of see the bracket bending. Uh, I think it's just placing too much unnecessary tension uh, on these two brackets to do it this way. So you'll see my solution to that in a little bit. Before Working the primary catalytic converter, I uh, fished the oxygen sensor wire up into the engine compartment just in case for some reason there was some kind of glitch and I needed to remove the primary catalytic converter. So, and once again, the uh, pickup tool was what came in super handy for getting it fished up through the engine compartment, uh, beside the engine, up into the uh, engine compartment because it was just flexible enough and also at the same time just stiff enough to be able to push it up uh, by myself. So once you're able to get a hold of it from the top side, then you install it. Next, uh, lock down the nuts holding the primary catalytic converter to the exhaust. Uh, they're tightened to 17 foot pounds or 23 newton meters, and there is a specific sequence. Start with the one that we can't see in this image and that you can barely see in real life, just like from the other side of the primary cat over here. And then, secondly, the one that I'm tightening in this image. Thirdly, the one on top. Fourth, the one that you can see down here. Four, here's the one on top. And then, finally, this one. My solution for the two brackets not lining up very well in the primary cat and the one that attached to the bell housing was to simply use some uh, fender washers to take up the extra slack.
Next, reinstall the clip that goes onto the bell housing and place the wire on. Then reinstall the heat shield. Then put it back on with the heat belt and place the wire lead on the rest of the clip. Now it's time to install the main catalytic converter. And before doing so, I use Scotch Bright to uh, clean all of the mating flanges. Then I put the main catalytic converter into place and held it uh, with one of the bolts in the bracket that holds it to the side of the frame of the car. Then slide the gasket between the primary catalytic converter and the main catalytic converter. And loosely install the new bolt and nuts where the studs and original nuts once were. I wasn't able with this one to get the bolt head to sit on this end and the nut on the other end. So this one had to be reversed, unlike the other two. With the main cat attached to the primary cat at the front, uh, loose, then you can reattach the uh, main cat to the exhaust at the back end uh, and also attach the bracket to the uh, frame of the car for the main catalytic converter. And even though I knew the brackets for the main catalytic converter to the transmission cross member were going to have to be removed, uh, I reinstalled them um, just to make sure that everything was going to line up correctly. Next, I tightened down the bolts that I replaced on the um, flange that connects the two pieces of exhaust pipe together at the back. And uh, I had to use a wrench on top. Uh, normally it's a carriage style bolt, so you don't have to counter hold them. So I replaced that with just some bolts that I had uh, that required getting a wrench on top to hold it in place, but it worked with mine. Next, uh, torque the nuts between the primary and main catalytic converter to be 17 foot pounds. I was only able to get my torque wrench on, on one of those nuts as shown uh, previously, so for the other two, to just estimate them. Next, place whatever you're using to support the transmission earlier back under the transmission to support it because you're going to be removing a cross member from the main. Now put the front drive shaft in place, ensuring to attach it correct end to correct end and also lining up the paint marks. I use the original bolt to um, sort of pre-seat both ends of the drive shaft and then one by one replace them and torque them. Then torque the uh, front drive shaft bolts um, on both ends and the sequence it's a uh, two-stage uh, torque sequence for these bolts. Initial tightening is 22 foot-pounds, so I did 22 foot-pounds, and all six had marked them with a sharpie as shown here. And then an additional 90 degrees, and I indicated that uh, with a paint pen. And don't forget, too, uh, you're going to need a helper to stop on the brake uh, when you're doing this. Next, I use the old hardware to reinstall the transmission cross member and reinstall it to the uh, transmission itself. Then I made sure the uh, main catalytic converter brackets lined up correctly with the transmission cross member. Then I removed the original transmission bolts that hold the transmission to the cross member and replace them with new ones as well as the bolts that hold the transmission cross member to the body. For the two bolts, 
uh, that go from the transmission cross member into the transmission support, uh, as well as the four bolts that hold the transmission cross member to the body. There's a two step tightening uh, sequence, and that is 37 foot pounds followed by 90 degrees. So I would torque them to 37 foot pounds and indicate it with a sharpie mark, and then add the 90 degrees, and I could check my sharpie mark to make sure it was indeed 90 degrees. And it is the same for the transmission cross member holes. Next, I tightened all of these screws that hold the main catalytic converter to the transmission cross member and body. Uh, and don't forget that there's also a bracket that goes into the cross member LS main catalytic converter. And those all get torqued to 17 foot pounds. Then put the transverse thread in place. Install the bolt that goes in the middle. Note that the bolt and washer come up from the bottom side. Then to the, the bolt with two nuts to seven and a half foot pounds. Then I reinstalled the one nut that was sort of interfering with the transverse strut, um, also to seven and a half foot pounds. Next, reinstall the three under trays. And finally, I reinstall the plastic engine bolt covers. There is a, a very specific break in uh, set of instructions that come with the new catalytic converter that must be followed. I don't have it with me right now. Um, but it's, uh, like I said, it comes with the new catalytic converter. It was something like turn on the engine, uh, don't step on the gas for a certain period of time. I forget how long it was. And then I think it was maybe two minutes. Then um, raise the throttle to something like 2,500 RPM and hold it there for five minutes. Uh, again, this is just from more than one month ago. I haven't thought about it since. So a little off on that, but you can read the instructions when you get it. And then I noticed that um, for about the last month, or for the first three weeks or so of driving, uh, there was a fair amount of white smoke coming out of the exhaust pipes. Um, and that's normal as the catalytic converter is breaking. It's also a little bit smelly. Um, but now it's pretty much back to normal. Uh, it sounds the same as it did before. Things are going great. So hopefully this helps if you need to do this job. It is a little daunting when you, you know, in pictures it looks one way, but when you're actually looking at it, you can see how little space there is to work with in there. Uh, extensions are your friend, and just hope that uh, the studs on the exhaust manifold are okay. Good luck.